Hello, and welcome to Gus McDowell Strategy and Tactics, and thank you to our subscribers. I'm Nick McDowell. Today we're continuing the Allied Grand Campaign in Close Combat at Bridge Too Far, a game based on the Battle of Arnhem, Operation Market Garden. In this series, we use the missions in the Allied Grand Campaign to illustrate one or more aspects of World War II infantry tactics at the company level and below. Each episode, we conduct basic mission analysis, develop and analyse possible courses of action, then decide and execute the plan in real time, followed by lessons learned. Please remember to like the video and subscribe for more great strategy and tactics content, and the links to PayPal and Patreon are in the description. In this episode, we're in the Nijmegen sector, the Grosbeck Heights area of operations. Our objective is the Grosbeck landing zone. It is day four of Operation Market Garden, 0600 hours on 20 September 1944. Grosbeck Landing Zone You must keep the Germans from the Grosbeck Heights as long as possible to allow the 30 Corps troops unhindered access into Nijmegen. Until they arrive, this will be the primary staging area and source of supplies for 82nd Airborne. As such, letting it fall into German hands would be a disaster. You may have to fall back, but try to hold on until 30 Corps arrives somewhere around Day 4. Let's examine our forces. 30 Corps has indeed arrived, bringing with them tanks. Airborne BAR teams are the core of the American Airborne Divisions. They use an automatic rifle, semi-automatic rifles and hand grenades. The team leader is armed with a carbine. Use them on the front lines, but they should run or hide from tanks. Airborne rifle teams use semi-automatic rifles and hand grenades. The team leader is armed with a carbine. Use them on the front lines and to hold victory locations. They are useless against tanks. Bazooka teams consist of an anti-tank rocket launcher, a semi-automatic rifle and hand grenades. Not as effective as the Panzer Shrek, the bazooka still gives you cheap anti-tank capabilities. The bazooka's effective range is 8 to 80 metres. Ad hoc rifle teams are low quality replacement teams. They use single shot rifles and hand grenades. The team leader is armed with a submachine gun. Use them to free up higher quality teams for other duties. Airborne 60mm light mortar teams also contain semi-automatic rifles and hand grenades. Because mortars can shoot over obstacles, position these teams behind buildings or trees. Use them to lay smoke screens. 30 caliber medium machine gun teams include semi-automatic rifles and hand grenades. Position these teams in multi-story buildings or locations with long lines of sight so they can suppress enemy infantry while your units maneuver. Now to the tanks from 30 Corps. I'm tempted to draw down a medium tank such as a Firefly, the strongest tank in my arsenal. However, I can only get one Firefly and tanks never work alone by choice. Instead, I will choose support tanks. I'm expecting enemy tanks so a pair of Achilles seems like a good choice. The Achilles is a medium tank destroyer. It is open-topped and armed with a 3-inch AT gun and a 50 caliber machine gun. Use it in an ambush roll against German tanks. Achilles is the British name for the American M10. Sounds perfect. Next, let's look at the map and do some mission analysis. I will develop a plan and then execute it in the game. Our mission is to defend the Grosbeck landing zone in order to prevent the Germans interdicting Hell's Highway at Nijmegen. We have a platoon from the 82nd Airborne, consisting of a BAR squad, rifle squad, and an ad hoc rifle squad. From support company, we have three bazooka squads, two 60mm light mortars, and two 30 caliber machine guns. And from 30 Corps, we have two Achilles tank destroyers. North is towards the bottom of the map. I have marked five areas of interest. No doubt these are getting rather familiar. Number one, the large open field I am using as a landing zone for supplies and reinforcements. This is not defensible terrain, as it has long lines of sight and little or no cover and concealment. Number two, a field behind a row of trees along a roadway, somewhat screened from observation. Number three, a pair of ruined buildings, potential hiding places for infantry, offering a partly concealed approach between the farm complex and the tree line. Number four, a farm complex with stables, an orchard, and a three-story building that gives the enemy good observation and fields of fire over the whole area. And number five, a gun pit that covers the open ground and partially enfilades the stone wall. Based on the previous day's events, I assess the enemy will counterattack from the Reichswald with infantry and tanks. I now have two Achilles tank destroyers and three bazooka squads. It is time for an anti-tank ambush. To construct my anti-tank ambush, I will revisit the analysis of this terrain I did back in episode 14. Because I'm expecting tanks, let's look at how terrain can influence armoured movement and create targeting opportunities for my forces. The lines on the map indicate terrain that is impassable or difficult for vehicles, such as the stone walls, buildings and ruins. This terrain channels or canalises vehicle movement along certain routes which we can target. 
If tanks start from the assembly areas marked A or B, there are really only two avenues of approach they can use to move from the left side of the map to the right side of the map. In other words, to break through my defences and get to Nijmegen. I have marked the avenues of approach in red, and the question marks indicate the likely debouchement points. These are the places where the tanks will break out from this terrain into the open fields beyond. Because we can infer the tanks will have to use one or both of these two points, they make great areas in which to engage the tanks with anti-tank weapons. But I will need to plan my defensive position against both infantry and armoured attack. My basic structure will be a linear anti-tank ambush. To the south, at the top of the map, I will place an Achilles under Corporal Mulder behind the ruined farmhouse. Primary task is to fire into and beyond engagement area 1, and secondary task is to fire into engagement area 2. It will use anti-tank rounds against tanks, and the 50 caliber machine gun against infantry. Also in the ruined farmhouse, I will place the machine gun squad under Private Kang to fire at infantry targets crossing open ground in engagement area 2. Behind the long stone wall, I will place three bazooka teams. Their task will be to attack any tanks in engagement area 1, with an emphasis on taking flanking shots. Corporal Leach's rifle squad in the stables will provide them with early warning and flank security against infantry. To the north, amongst the ruined buildings, I will place the second Achilles under Lance Corporal Goodley. This will fire into engagement area 1, with a secondary task to cover any tanks emerging from engagement area 2. Providing flank security against infantry are the 2nd Machine Gun Squad under PFC Mulder and Corporal Hampton's BAR Squad. These will bring a lot of firepower against infantry in the open. I have placed Sergeant Orbison and the Ad Hoc Rifle Squad in reserve, with the two 60mm light mortars in defilade behind the tree line to engage targets of opportunity. The general idea behind this linear ambush is to present the enemy tanks with a dilemma. If they face the Bazookas and Mulder's Achilles in the south, they present their flanks to Goodley's Achilles in the north, and if they face Goodley's Achilles in the north, they present their flanks to the Bazookas and Mulder's Achilles in the south. In general terms, I expect the Achilles to engage at medium range, and the Bazookas to engage at short range. The essence of anti-tank artillery tactics is surprise action from well-concealed positions at effective range. I have now moved my troops into position and will execute the plan in real time. Let me know in the comments below what you think of the various courses of action and if you have identified a viable alternative. And don't forget to like the video and subscribe for more great strategy and tactics content. And so we begin. An AFE. No, three AFE. After some indecision, Goodley targets the Flammpanzerwagen, two flamethrowers mounted on a Sonderkraft fuzzoid. Hit and destroyed. We're under heavy fire. No target for Mulder yet. Goodley now targets the Sonderkraft fuzzoid with a heavy machine gun. Hit and destroyed. Nice work, Goodley. But he can't get a shot on the bar 9. Panzer! A Mark IV pops out behind a building and takes a shot at Mulder's Achilles. Target tank! Mulder targets the Mark IV, then loses the shot. Get me out! The mortars target the Bar 9. And the enemy Granatwerfer. Hit and destroyed! Mulder destroys the Bar 9. A mortar round finishes the job. The Mark IV is targeting the Bazooka. They can see it, but it is too far away. In disaster, a mortar round lands in the Achilles. The bazooka squads are starting to take casualties from the Mark IV tank. Time to move them to cover. The Flam Panzerwagen cooks off. Kang's machine gun opens fire at the location of the enemy mortar.
Enemy infantry are breaking out of the farmhouse. Reserve and Sturmgrenadier squads. One of the 60mm mortars opens a fire mission. Hampton's BAR squad targets another Sturmgrenadier squad. As does Mulder's 30 cal. Goodley's Achilles doesn't have a shot at the Mark IV yet, but it can target the Sturmgrenadier in the open. Target tank! Fire! Miss! The Mark IV returns fire and misses. Fire! Miss! The Mark IV misses again. Meanwhile, the enemy moving towards the stables take heavy casualties. The bazooka is still out of range. The Mark IV is playing a cautious game. The reserve squad has been destroyed. The Sturm Grenadier have taken casualties. And an MG42 is moving up on my left flank. Both mortars adjust fire. The Achilles manoeuvres for the shot. Both vehicles presenting their flanks. Not good. Fire! Miss! The bar 9 cooks off. Come on, Goodly! The Mark IV misses again. So does Goodley. This is tense. Still no shot. Almost. Out of bazooka range. Oh no! The Mark IV gets the drop on Goodley. The second Achilles is knocked out. Now it is down to the bazooka squads. The good news is that we have knocked out three APCs and the German infantry squads have taken heavy casualties and are bottled up in the farmhouse complex. The mortars expend the last of their ammunition. Still out of range. I am willing the Mark IV to move into the engagement area. Meanwhile, the bazookas go to ground. The APC cooks off. Tyson from the BAR squad has gone berserk. He charges the enemy in the ruined building opposite. Corporal Hampton joins him.
Finally, the Mark IV moves into range, triggering the last element of the linear ambush. Yes, hit and destroyed. Kilgore and the Bazooka wins the match point. The Bazookas have done their job and go to ground. Now to deal with the German infantry and send them packing all the way back to the Reich. Firing dies down. With their armour destroyed, I think they have lost heart. Kang on the machine gun targets the Granatwerfer. He starts taking fire from a Schutzen squad opposite and targets them instead. I am still facing two Sturmgrenadier squads and a Schutzen squad. I was planning to use the 50 cals on the Achilles to suppress enemy infantry, but that is no longer an option. And my mortars and machine guns are low on ammunition. Pull me here raus. The third Sturm Grenadier squad moving around the farmhouse is in a bad way. It might be best to stay defensive and let the Germans do something stupid rather than attempt something stupid myself. Hmm. So far, we have knocked out three Sonderkraftfahrzeuge 259. The first, a heavy machine gun carrier, a Sonderkraftfahrzeug 251x1. The second, a mortar carrier, a Sonderkraftfahrzeug 250x9. And the third, a Flammpanzerwagen, a Sonderkraftfahrzeug 251x16. and a Panzerkampfwagen Mark IV. We have suppressed the enemy Granatwerfer and destroyed a reserve squad. We face three Sturmgrenadier squads in the farmhouse complex. The Schutzen squad crosses open ground to reinforce. And there is an MG42 somewhere. Thankfully, my infantry casualties are fairly light. The Achilles cooks off. One of the bazooka squads is eliminated. Mulder has two belts of ammunition, 500 rounds, 
but we will wait before using them. The Germans are forming up for an assault in the centre, two Sturmgrenadier squads, and another moving up to reinforce. Almost 20 soldiers in all. Kang fires his last rounds at the Granitwerfer. He goes to ground. I'm keeping an eye on the Germans forming up in the ruins opposite. Once they break cover, I will hit them with everything I have left. Time to bring Sergeant Orbison and the ad hoc rifle squad forward. Here they come. The machine gun targets the Schützen. The BAR targets the Sturmgrenadier. The rifle squad in the stables hits them from behind. Bazooka join in. The Sturmgrenadier in the assault falter. Their squad is destroyed. The Germans start to fall back. The battle ended because the Germans were routed from the map. The Allies gained control of the area, but the Germans are expected to launch a counterattack later. The German forces took excessive losses. I made allied progress of 60 against expected progress of 35 by the end of the day. I suffered 8 KIA and lost 2 Achilles. The enemy suffered 32 KIA, 4 MIA, a Panzerkampfwagen Mark IV and 3 Sonderkraftfahrzeug. They will not attack here again today. A Bronze Star and Combat Infantryman's Badge were awarded. Let's examine casualties on all sides. First, the British, from 30 Corps. Both vehicle commanders are seriously injured, and Trooper Lamb is killed. Trooper Jagger in Goodley's Achilles knocked out two vehicles and is awarded the Distinguished Conduct Medal. Next, the Americans, from the 82nd Airborne Division. The infantry fared quite well overall, although I lost a bazooka squad. PFC Mulder in the 30 Cal accounts for 15 enemy casualties and is awarded the Bronze Star. Surprisingly, Kilgore from the Bazookas knocked out the Mark IV tank and gets nothing. I nominate him for a bar to his combat infantryman's badge. Once again, the support teams did most of the fighting. Then the Germans from the 1st Fallschirmjäger Army. Another Kampfgruppe wiped out. Most of three Sturmgrenadier squads, including our old friend Iceman, an MG42, a Schützen squad, a reserve squad, a Panzerkampfwagen Mark IV, and three Sonderkraftfahrzeug. But the Granatwerfer squad survived. For knocking out an Achilles, all three received the assault badge. Fair play, it was a great shot. 
So, what did we learn? My key takeaway from this battle is the importance of reserves. Careful planning and placement of the Achilles anti-tank guns achieved surprise action from well-concealed positions at effective range. This resulted in the early destruction of three enemy AFVs. Then, an unlucky mortar strike took out one of the Achilles, but I still had a second Achilles in reserve. The second Achilles then lost a gunnery duel with the Mark IV Panzer. This could have been the end of the matter. But I still had the three bazooka squads in reserve. One of those squads was able to destroy the Mark IV Panzer. Without their armoured support and with no more reserves, the German infantry assault failed. My ambush worked because I had lots of reserves, and not just any reserves. Both Achilles and the three bazooka squads were all creating the same anti-tank effect. I was not relying on a single asset to carry the day. When I lost one asset, the next one stepped up. Let me know what you think in the comments below. As always, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe and donate, and stay tuned for the next episode.